Electrical brain stimulation has been used since the mid-1800s, and the basic procedure for electrical brain stimulation involves applying direct electrical current to specific areas of the brain, producing a corresponding neurological experience or behavior. So when electrical current is applied to a specific area, a patient may demonstrate a unique response, ranging from changes in blood pressure and breathing to sensory motor and emotional and even cognitive experiences. Research by Jerry Letvin suggests that people have neurons that respond specifically to photos of their grandmother. These subject-specific neurons have come to be called grandmother cells. Interestingly, later research identified neurons that fired steadily each time images of a specific celebrity like Jennifer Aniston appeared on the screen. But it did not fire for other photos. The observed effect remained steady for line drawings, profiles, or even when the celebrity was wearing like a mask. So interestingly, these activations seem to be categorical rather than specific. For example, a firing neuron that responded to Luke Skywalker also fired to Yoda, who's another Jedi from Star Wars. What can be inferred from these studies is a subject of much debate. Clearly, these findings cannot be evidence of an extreme localization of an idea or a concept, as it would mean that the death of a single neuron would mean the loss of a wide and important concept or memory, such as the memory of one's own grandmother. Another big problem with these studies was first illustrated by Carl Lashley. After repeated motoric EBS experiments on monkeys, he found that results changed over time. It seemed that one day's mapping would no longer be val valid on the next day, so that the location of where these firings were occurring was changing over time. These findings do suggest two things. First, that the brain structure is more likely composed of networks of neurons that respond to related information rather than interlocking areas of localization. This interrelated neuroanatomy may make the brain far more flexible than previously believed. Second, it shows that a single neuron can process information that's far more sophisticated and associative than expected from a binary computational system. How the brain makes these sophisticated associations on a neuronal level could have a tremendous impact on our metacognitive understanding and lead to new approaches to learning and self-regulation. This perhaps indicates that there are primitive precursor metacognitive actions being performed by the brain at a neuronal level.